welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 180. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is James. You know, it better be important that you just drag me out of bed for this. I don't want to be here. Am I getting paid? No? No, nah, bye. I'm out. I'm out. I'm not staying. Oh, well, it's not that bad. Now, don't you know that I do everything for money and I don't care for the... Pre- Actually, no. Uh, but anywho, also joining us today is Ro. Hello, all you happy people. How are you doing, man? Slowly but surely, fan art, dating, work, new tablet. Oh, wow, what did you get? It's a whack into a small, thanks to our common Finnish friend, who didn't need this tablet because he's a writer. Ah, alright, awesome, awesome. His generous awesome. donation has helped me greatly, because I was seriously paranoid about my old tablet, because it's really, really cheap, it's... Could fall apart like any second now. So yeah, this puts my mind at ease greatly. Awesome and the guy, man. All right, all right. And also joining us today is Kyle. The midnight scribe is here. How are you all doing? <laughs> fine, fine. And right over the gate, plugging. Oh yeah, no, immediately straight out of the gate. I mean, I've got to get these plugs down to a fine art, Norman. As you know, whenever I'm on a creative vibes major plug, uh, we always talk about the MBS show, so I've got to cram them in any opportunity I get on the next guy's creative vibes to mention how the MBS show it's absolutely fantastic, and of course I mention that any time on Midnight Scribes Creative Vibes on the Helm Bronies YouTube channel. Please stop me. <laughs> <laughs> how many plugs do they get in? How many plugs do they get in there? Because like if you're charging me for each one, I'm gonna be skinned by the time we get to the you first al- news item. You almost crash Google Chrome. <laughs> Google Chrome it doesn't take much to crash Google Chrome. I could have just said mids and it would have crashed it. <laughs> now you might not hear it or you might not tell, but he is getting into your ears with a very uh subtle <laughs> subtle message. It's like a hidden message. Yeah. In the yeah. tape. You, you are not hearing it, but you are. It's very slow and it says in the background join join <laughs> join. So if you listen if you listen very carefully to what I just said, you might have just heard the words Midnight Scribes Creative Vibes. Now, ignore that. That is not important. The words that are important are MBS. I want you to remember those words. Let them soak into your mind as you watch Creative Vibes. Just imagine MBS around you. All around you. To the left of you. To the right of you. Above Mm -hmm. you. Below you. In your head and outside it. Remember, MBS is your life. This escalated quickly. Yeah, while you're listening to the Creative Vibes and MBS show, be sure to read Emmy Larson's book, Penny Royal Academy, available on Amazon. <laughs> uh, I got it down to fine art. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> uh, but how are you guys doing, man? Like, how is everybody sweet? Oh. Yeah, it's been a busy run. Uh, I see. What are you doing? Ever since I got Picado Premium, I've been live streaming like a nut job because I want to make my money's worth. I know it's only ten bucks, but since I'm in the potato land, third world country, ten bucks is a lot for me. True. So you know, don't want, don't want any penny go to waste. And besides, it's been a jolly cooperation. Ever since I got Premium, everyone wanted to start streaming with me. It was like, yay, party time! Wow, I wonder why they went to stream with you. I know Premium. Everyone wants to like join in the action. All right. And I'm okay with this. All right, all right, all right. And you, James? Uh, what happened? Next, next. It was not a very good week. Oh, all right. This week has been this week has been rather um, frustrating, long, quite disappointing, but a bit drama filled in uh, certain areas. Ah, hmm. uh, yes. Okay, okay. But... People treat people treat your artists with respect. Uh, it's just a big letdown when. You go to someone and you are talking to them about a drawing, a picture, things, uh, seems like things are going well, alright, and then they kind of like turn heel on you. I'm not giving any names, I'm keeping it very uh, vague, because I don't want to say who this person was, but I had an experience taking to the times when I wasn't full of anything. Self-entitled person going to me who didn't even give me a, not a dime, not a bit of feedback, wanted to commission me, but then decided to turn heel. And started spouting stuff about the Brony fandom being, uh, well, you know, what every single person who doesn't like the Brony fandom has been saying for the past four years. All right. I mean, I, I don't know what to say about that. So, it's not been a very good week on that regard. And on the personal side, it's not been a very good week either. 
because the two movies that I went to watch to the movies have been really disappointing. Really? I thought you... Okay, uh, yes. I know you watched a movie called uh, A Man From... Uh, a Man? The, the Man, the ma- called, the man uh, From Uncle. Yeah, the, the Man, man From Uncle. Uncle. Yeah, I, yeah I, I watched The Man From Uncle and Fantastic Four. I watched both movies. Oh, may God have pity on your soul for Fantastic Four. But Uncle was not bad. <laughs> I, I like Uncle. I think it was needlessly stylized. I thought it was pointless. I, uh... I didn't like the way the movie was edited, where they, the, the, the movie feels the need to, uh, Guy Ritchie feels the need to throw a twist in every single goddamn scene he makes, ever since he made uh, Sherlock Holmes with Robert Downey Jr., which I thought Sherlock Holmes was a pretty good movie. And the appeal of that film is that you can see how Sherlock thinks and how he acts. Like it managed, it managed to keep the concept of Sherlock Holmes uh, separated from the BBC TV show and keeping it still fresh, unique, and interesting. But then uh, he decided to apply the same logic to all of his movies, and The Man from Uncle is exactly like that, where he is like, oh, I'm going to edit this scene this way. And then five minutes later, I'm going to show you the parts of that scene that you didn't see, so I am just going to show you back... To show it back to you. If you remove all the flashbacks in The Man from Uncle, the movie will be an hour long. And mm-hmm. it's almost two hours. Okay. There okay. is no need for the movie to be edited like that. It is stupid. Uh, stupid I, I that know. Ne- 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 it, 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 I know what it's trying to say. I know what it's trying to do is say, you know, there is more things behind the scenes. There is more things that, that uh, are going on here that you don't know about. <sighs> this year is high on the spy movies. We have we have had Kinsman, mm-hmm. we had The Man from Uncle, Mission Impossible Rogue Nation, and by the end of the year we're going to have Spectre, the new James Bond movie. Mm-hmm. So far, I think the best spy movie of the of them all has been so far Kingsman. Well, okay, Kingsman was not bad. Because but even, even though I didn't like the characters, I thought the characters were awful, I, I had a lot of fun with the movie. I mean, the ending was amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Take the, the ending was absolutely... Yeah, it was... Such a ruckus of an ending. It was great. <laughs> so yes, for that the movie is the, the the movie definitely deserves uh, praise from me. But God, damn, man's from Kingsman. The 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 man the man's from Uncle was a was an annoying film. Yeah, it was annoying. I, I loved it. Like I I do highly enjoy the movie. Like it was one of those movies where hmm, I did not expect anything much, but I came out happy. Nah, well. Uh, anyway, Kyle, what about you, man? Eh, middle of the roads, I'll, I'll say. There's been, like, I've had a pretty good week, eh, you know, work's been going great, video games have been going great, eh, as you well know, we've been playing a few games and all the rest of it, mm-hmm. but eh, I don't know, it's, it's just one of those kind of mellow moods at the moment, just kind of, alright, I'm not here, you know, I'm, it's like, you know, the, the uh, was it the, the wheels turning but the hamster's dead? It's like, that's kind of what's going on in my How? head right now. No, oh, what the hell is that expression? Wow. <laughs> that's a bit, that's a bit grim dark. I know. How? <laughs> well, no, it just means that I'm functioning. It's just, I'm not entirely here. <laughs> Alrighty then, alrighty then. You are an autopilot, that is what you mean. Hmm. A semi-autopilot, yeah, that's, that's one way of putting it, I suppose. I mean, things are going great, but, you know, could be going better in some areas, I'll say that much. Hmm. All right, all right. And as for me, well, two, two interesting... Nobody cares about Norman, let's move oh. to Raw. Yeah, move on. Eh? Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, no, I see, I see Norman, I, no, I apologize, Wait. Norman. Here, like, listen, I, we apologize. I mean, you're, like, you're such a lovely guy, and you, we all love sad. you, and... You're quite cute, and it's great to see you here, and I'm sure you'll be a Malaysian idol, and can you guys help me flirt with him here? Because I usually <laughs> flirt with you two, so it's my job to make flirt with him. You know what? Ty did a better job than you guys. Uh. But that's only because I was working on him for the previous month and a half for <laughs> Creative Vibes. <laughs> uh, anyway. 27. That's the amount of plugs that you have put in so far. <laughs> oh, yeah, she keep counting. Oh, brilliant. Right, I'll, I'll make sure oh. to fit in a few more for the before the end. <laughs> Well, as for me, two, two interesting things happened. I started playing basketball again after, what, a few years now? And boy, was the aftermath awesome. <laughs> My body ached for about a week now. <laughs> uh, so, that's that. 
went out and bought new basketball shoes and pants. So can't wait for next week's game. Uh, I'm, I'm interested to see if my body aches again or not. And I started playing Dota. Oh god. Oh. Was it because of that new update that they released? No. It, it, there was an update? I don't know. Yeah, apparently somebody made a mod of Dota so you can play Half-Life Episode 3. What? Really? <laughs> yeah, I think, I, uh, the, the, the mod of Ask Sirius Rainbow showed it to me and I was like, what the hell? And he's like, yeah, it's the only reason I would play Dota. And I'm like, well, that's cool. <laughs> Nothing to Dota, but yeah, apparently that's a thing. I don't know. I'm, I never heard of that. But yeah, so yeah, if you want to go play Half Life <laughs> Half Life Episode Three, even if it's in Dota, yeah, go get it. It's on Steam. <laughs> we do not talk about Half Life Three or Episode Three. We do, we just do not talk about. It. We're not letting Valve get away with it. <laughs> with like a decade of that's not a word teasing. <laughs> well, they go and wow, that's not a word. And left for dead and. Team Fortress. All these great games. <coughs> games. Love the games. But can they ever... Like, they're worse than babies. They cannot count up... That's not a word! Three. It's like, oh, we'll do one. That's not a word as well. We'll do a sequel. And then... Oh, wait. Sorry. Hang on. Wait. It's like they went to the George Lucas school of counting. Like, they cannot actually count. It's like, George Lucas, like, the, the old joke with him is like, how did he teach his children to count? Children, count to ten. Four, five, six. One, two, three. Ten. <laughs> Unfortunately, with Valve, counting to three is completely impossible because what they do is one, two, then one and a half, two, two point one, two point two, two point three has not been made. So we might do three, but we're not going to do three. So we're going to go back to one again. And we're going to start with something else entirely. Well done, Valve. Well done. Wow. Why don't we teach us maths at school? Thank you so so much. Your salt is strong with this well, one. Well, somebody, somebody's salty here. Yeah. Well, uh, I don't know. Like you're angry or something, Kyle. Are you okay? <laughs> no, I'm not okay. <laughs> Do you like Half Life for some reason? Or like, do I like Half Life, or do I just like games, or do I just think Valve occasionally? No, it, it, no. It's just I'm wondering why you like that super overrated video game. Is just that you know. Well, I mean, <laughs> there are many reasons why I like that particular game. I mean, I could list them here, but. Uh, I, I'm on all pilots and I don't want to, uh, I don't know where I'll go, basically. It may start off with a conversation about Half Life and then it'll end up going somewhere take, else entirely. Don't take the oldness position away from Norman. It's his only purpose in here, so, <laughs> hey. so don't take that away from him, come on. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah, so, but hang on, wait. What roles are we then? Are, like, if he's the old one, what are us three? Like, what are you, me, and Rose? <laughs> oh, no, Rose's fine. So hang on, if. He's not. He's not as old as Norman anyway. Oh yeah, but that goes without saying. I mean, if you combined all three of our ages, we'd still be half the age of Norman. <laughs> yeah, we would. The things that you have to put up with with our youngsters. I know Norman. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> How did this end up for me saying I play Dota 2 my age? Like, what? <laughs> it's because, you see, Norman, I am the master of segues, and I can move any conversation to talking about your age. <laughs> With a little help from my friends. Oh. He drives one of those vehicle thingies. He's the master of segways. <laughs> oh. 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 They see me rolling <laughs> in my segway. Uh, well, all right. But anyway, anyway. like uh, I, I got no comeback for that. But anyway. Uh, Carl, everybody knows that Midnight Scribes Crazy Vibes is born in Scotland. That's true, right? Uh, yes, it is true. I mean, it was born in Scotland, but born on the web. It's a, it's a product of the web. Everyone owns it. The world owns it. Mm-hmm. But um, if it means that Scotland can take credit for something else that we've invented, frankly, I'll, I'll add it to the list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And also, if I'm not mistaken, Scotland is still part of the United Kingdom. Am I right? That is entirely true. All right, all right, all right. You see where I'm going with this? You see where I'm going with this? I see where you're going with this. No, Listen, no, like, no not gonna... really. I don't see where you're going with this, Norman, please. Well, but anyway, what are you... Talking about okay, but anyway, James, you remember you buy those My Little Pony magazines with the ponies inside them? Yeah, of course, they are all over Europe. Mm-hmm. And next month, Nightmare Moon. Yeah, I saw that. That's weird. Why? Why? Why is it weird? You know, like because why they, they they are putting so much effort into something that is basically thrown under the rug of the 
many other kids and children's magazines that are just uh, okay. Let's let's face it, people. When children magazines, at least the MLP magazine in the UK, the best thing that came out of that in that magazine was a guitar that didn't even work. Okay. A tiny plastic guitar. I know it. I, I know it because I bought it uh, when I was uh, <laughs> living over there in Scotland. And uh, yeah, I know. And it's it's just that. Wow, they are actually putting effort into uh, putting something on the magazine, giving it a reason to uh, to be purchased, because it has the, it's like a miniature Funko. It has the same quality and it looks exactly like the Funkos, but it, they are like fifty uh, percent smaller, seventy five percent smaller. They are super tiny, mm-hmm. but they look so good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're I think they're the same size as the Funko uh, Mystery Minis. And, but they have the proper color scheme instead of black. So yeah. I think they are smaller than that. Really? We have to wait and see. I, I don't know. No, I have a couple. They are smaller than the Funko Minis. Mystery they Minis. Are like, right? they, they, they are like, they are, yeah, they are smaller than the Funko Mystery Minis. Mm. I have a Funko, I have a Funko Mystery Mini, and I have one of the so, magazine what? ones. By the way, yeah. They are like, scale on, scale on size. It's like human dwarf hobbit <laughs> levels of pony, pony all right. size. Yes. All right, all right. But anyway. Next one you're gonna get Nightmare Moon. So that's awesome because well, I don't have it here at all, so I'm very jealous. And the last time when we mentioned this, almost all of Europe has the magazine. It's just EQD likes to specify certain countries. So yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know why, but hey, I don't I don't really mind. E- EQD likes to specify certain countries because they don't they, they don't want to like say, Oh, this, this, this and that. I Guess they just do it because hey, look, people from this country are reporting it. Hmm. Therefore, the magazine is on that country. Yeah, they don't I, make assumptions. I would say that's true. Like that's a safe bet. Like if the news comes from Spain, it's from Spain. So yeah, of course. Imagine if they say, "Oh, uh, this appears in Germany," uh, so uh, uh, all of Europe has it, and then Greece comes and says, oh, "Not only we have recession, but we don't have ponies." Ah! You haters, and then you have drama. So yeah, they don't make assumptions, so they just focus on the one country that, it, that the news is coming. Yeah, true, true. Which I think it's clever on the it's clever on their part. It's safe, to be it's safe. But back yeah, to the back to the matter is like Europeans, you guys can buy the magazine, and you get a pony figure inside. And like you said, James, that they put effort into selling this, and I think this is ingenious. It's ridiculous how look, how good it looks. It's just. It, my God, it, it's so cool. Yeah, I have a strong feeling that next month's issue of the My Little Pony magazine is going to be sell out super quick. Like they It's going to any... sold out. Yeah. Nightmare Moon. Who doesn't want Nightmare Moon? Wait until they release one with Princess Luna. People oh. will... That there will be riots in the streets. Oh, oh wow. Oh, wow. But... Uh, yeah. But, to be uh, honest, the one that looks the, the the one that looks the better out of all the figurines they released um, is Vinyl Scratch. Mm, true that, true that. Like the, the the glasses, the glasses on her are not painted. They are part of the model. Mm. They're actually three dimensional. They look great. You guys can get it if you go to the store and find it. Pro- I'm not sure about Euro. Probably they won't have it there. I'm guessing because no demand. There are some magazines, but most of them are coloring books, and I haven't seen a single figurine of them. I did discover that I we have some MLP book. dolls, but they're very expensive for my budget. Yeah, and they're dolls. Why do I want to buy the Equestria Go Just for decoration purpose, you know, just... Bro, if we are ever going to meet, I will pay you whatever it, de- whatever it takes. Get me one of those coloring books. I'd love to have one. Oh, really? <laughs> I love when you right. Yes. Cool. Uh, ju- quite, quite, quite honestly, I would love to just so I can mess around with it. <laughs> oh wow! <well>, practice coloring. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> and, and just mess around with. Okay, so like you you know those uh, uh, exercises that are like a grid, and then you have a, a grid with a picture inside, <laughs> and then they give you another grid, and it's like draw a scootaloo <laughs> on this bigger grid. Instead of scootaloo, you will draw a chicken or something like that. You know, <laughs> like well, I did draw a scootaloo. I mean, come on, you're just not seeing it. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay. I, I don't know if we mentioned this before about you and me, James and Silver, we reviewed the comics. Yeah, we kind of do in between the episodes. When we don't have anything else to review, we review the comics. Mm-hmm. And we always mention that the art looks good. 
Yeah, we always say that. Mm -hmm. and it, because it's true. What's better than looking at good art in the comics? Having the good art in the comics. True that. And soon enough, um, we're going to get the My Little Pony Art is Magic art book. This this is interesting. I, I like this. I bought I bought this on the Comixology app. And honestly, money not well spent. <laughs> oh okay. The reason why okay, is why? The reason why is it's in digital form. That's the only regret. It's not a comic book, it's just a picture. So I paid money for pictures and I felt a bit of regret buying it. I wish I could have just bought the physical copy because if I had a physical copy, I could have framed the picture and put it up. You know what I mean? The, when we were at Manchester, they were selling it. Oh, I bought it. I bought it. Why did you buy it on digital then? This was the first one when it came out, when I was gun ho and oh. supporting them. Well, yeah, that's what happens when it, you know what? I thought you were talking about Something like an art book, like uh, concept design. No, no, they show you like, the sketches and the different ideas they have for the characters. No. And I was like, oh, getting excited because then I could add it to the collection of art books that I have. Oh, that one here. But now you're telling me that it's just, they, they are like what? Like, uh, like a portfolio? It's just one simple print of uh, like the covers? and. Well, it's actually a full collection because the new one's coming out. And that one has art by Tony Fleece. Jay Fosgate, Sarah Richard, Andy Price, Brenda Hickey, like Agnes Kaborska, and many more. Agnes Kaborska, Agnes Kaborska, yes. Yeah, so and many more. Like hmm. all of this are awesome. Um, and the, you're saying that the purchase is not worth it? In digital. In digital, is not worth it. If it was physical, it would be different. Yes. And well, yeah, that's what happens. Usually when you want to own one of those art books, you want to own the physical copy mm -hmm. because you want to pass the pages. Yeah. And you want to just like admire it and just look at it normally. You don't want to look at it on your tablet or looking at a monitor. Mm -hmm. You want to feel the book on your hands. Yeah, true that. And also the price for this one is going to be 20 bucks American. Well, supposedly 20 bucks American. And they have 148 pages in them. Uh, in uh, 8 by 5 inch times 12 inch book so hey uh, this is cool and if you go look see at the link uh, the cover art is one of the what's the word I'm looking for one of the previous cover art that they use but Andy Price did mention that uh, that this is not the final cover and a newer cover will be revealed later on so that's cool other than that art book yay like just Pictures. Art book, yay! It sucks. Don't buy it on digital. <laughs> yeah, just buy it on physical, so you can appreciate it even more. It will be exp more expensive because everything is more expensive on um, physical format, mm -hmm. but it is definitely uh, worth it. Yep, yep. I would just. This is one of the few times I would say buy in physical form if you need to get it. If not, just don't, because technically you're not missing much. It's just an art book, and also. Um, Equestria goals, the uh, equestrian games, the shorts are out. The shorts are out and awesome. Anybody seen them yet? Not yet. I didn't even know they were out yet. Like the shorts, like those uh, funny things that they did previously, and they're doing it here again. Oh, you mean the trailers? I thought they meant the clothes. Well, well, this is technically not trailers, but yeah, let's go with that. Uh, I made the mistake of watching them in Spanish because I didn't. Oh, that one! <laughs> I watched that one in Spanish too. They are not getting better with the voice acting in the... Uh, because I, at first I thought, hmm, Spanish coming up first. Maybe it's like, you know, South American Spanish. Like, uh, because before, mm -hmm. every single Disney movie and every single animated movie that came translated into Spain, it came translated through uh, South America. Mm -hmm. Because that way they didn't have to spend money on... Uh, voice actors here in Spain. We will just get the money straight from Mexico, straight from Argentina. We wouldn't have to bother with that. Um, but no, it's Spanish from Spain, and it's horrible. Like, it's, it, it is really bad. It makes me wish that we actually had some, some uh, Hispanic voice actors, because 
they put emo- they would put emotion into it. <laughs> it's like in this in this uh, in these shorts, the uh, actors and actresses that put the voices out, they they suddenly didn't give a crap. Oh. Like I-, I felt that way too when I no, saw it. it. I'm not engaged into this. I don't care about any of this. Besides, um, it was a bad idea to start with the Lyra and Bon 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 because it was so dry and stupid. Oh, yeah. Like I-, I do agree with you on Ish. that, but on a second watch, like in English, it felt. Much better. Like, I felt that they were best friends. Well, I guess that after you get punched in the gut once, then you get punched in the gut second time, you are numb from the first time, so it doesn't hurt Not anymore. Not really, because, okay, the shot is, well, the Lyra and Bon Bon shot is a bit silly, but hey, it's <laughs> them competing. And after... Th- it is silly, but they made a mistake with that shot. What is... Well, first they could have made it a bit longer. Well, uh, while well, while well, keeping everything, no, 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 they could have made it a bit longer because what they should have done with that is uh, half one of them get in the competition, but the other doesn't. Oh, well, and saying, you know what, it doesn't matter if you didn't get in the competition or if uh, I you got in the competition and I didn't, we are still friends. Mm. Or don't let, don't have both the both of them get into the competition or what. Are they? Don't just say, hey, we're both in the same competition. That means we can still be friends. Yay. Ah, oh, the message that is sent to the little kids well, is not that I, 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 I don't think that's it, but uh, you know what? It doesn't really... That's my cynical self speaking. Mm. I am the person who actually likes the first Equestria Girls movie a lot more <laughs> than, than Rainbow Rocks huh. or, uh, all right, all right. or most likely the, the, the third one. I don't know. All right. But anyway... Uh, after the third watch, I know there's something else. Oh yeah, that uh, that reference to killer. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's like what? There is a there, there, there is a killer kill reference in my little pony. This is hilarious. I know. It's like what? Uh, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, go to the links and click on it. You'll take you'll see what we're talking about. And oh my goodness, like what? I wasn't expecting this. But hey, even, <laughs> even, um, the show create, uh, even the show creators do watch anime, so this proves it. Uh, what do you think about this one, James? Like, when you first saw it, like, when you first realized? What do you think? Well, I didn't watch Kill la Kill, never watched oh. it. I know it because of the quest record. So, yeah, well. It's a hot spot of creativity, proving that you can ponify anything. Okay. And the people running the show are definitely applying that to, to it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And we did saw mm-hmm. the killer kill, po- uh, killer kill characters in the Twilight and Pinkie Pie micro. Or Friends Forever series. Kind of get, yeah. I'm getting kind of worried though, because it's, I hope that, I mean, because Small P loves the, the, the references, like read the comics, watch any episode of the show starting from season three. Uh, uh, hell, they love to put them references, but I hope they don't go so far as to start losing their identity. Mm. Like you can, you can make so many references until you start losing the, the, the thing that makes you appealing. Mm, I see, I see. But I don't think that the, it will happen, like, they're, they're good. They're, they know what to do. Let's hope that they, let's hope they do. And well, this makes me more hyped for friendship games. So, yay! Let's see what happens next. Let's see what happens next. And that's the news this week. Like, there's nothing much to cover. But with that, we're near the end. So, anybody else have anything to say? Not much. Happy, Everything's you know, pretty crystal clear at this point. Oh, it's a Saturday. It's a slow day. I need to clean my keyboard. It's full of. Dust. <laughs> Stupid African weather. Wow. Okay. That is the problem when you live 60 miles away from Africa, is that when you get, uh, when you get wind, all the dust that comes, African <laughs> dust. Uh. And it, co- it covers up everything, it's ridiculous. It's like interstellar, it, it's just that... <sighs> alright then, alright. But anyway, what else could I say, except... If you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at thebishow.gmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show. Sweetie, but we'll tweet about the show and probably some of the things that might interest us. And as for me, you can catch me at Norman Sanzo. I tweet about toys, food, and whatever tickles my fancy. 
And currently, right now, I don't know. I'm just all random. <laughs> what about you, James? Um, well, check my Twitter, which I have been trying to promote lately at James Cork. Uh, check the Tumblr at askmoviesleague.tumblr.com and uh, please check the DeviantArt at jamescork.deviantart.com. If you if you want, of course, I just post the arts. That's all I do. I have nothing oh, else. Right. And Ro, what about you, man? You can find me at my Twitter at Ruicious underscore art, where I tweet about well, com- web comics and other art related stuff. Or you can check out my DA for my artwork. Also, I am currently available for hire. If you have an idea that you want illustrated, I'm your man with the plan. And Kyle, what about you? Well, you can find me on uh, facebook.com for slash Kyle McCall. That's my official page. But the I'm also part of the Helm Bronies uh, at facebook.com for slash Helm Bronies. That's where Midnight Scribes Creative Vibes is born. That's where our little community is. And, of course, if you want to watch Wait, the episodes... Yeah. <laughs> and now 29, because if you go to youtube.com uh, forward slash uh, Helm Bronies, you can find our channel, and that's where every new episode of Midnight Scribes Creative Vibes 29 uh, can be found. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and many more to come in the future. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also, like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on com. Links will be provided in the show notes. I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been a Spanish person. I am malicious, rhymes with delicious. I'm a dead half Sir Rain. Uh, we'll catch you next week with another awesome episode of the NBA show. So, take us out. Oh, that's giving us so much credit, man. On the next episode.